Hi, and thanks for joining us today. You know, you can add textures to virtually any kind of photo. Today on Visual Art Photography Tutorials, we're going to be adding texture to our macro photography. It's going to give it a really beautiful artistic feel. So we're going to add textures two different ways today. The first, we're going to do it in camera via the use of multiple exposures. And the second way, we're going to do it in Photoshop. Let's get started. First up, a double exposure of crocuses and a painting. Now, how I did this was I took my camera outside the house, took picture, a picture of these crocuses, then came back in and took the second exposure in camera of a picture on the wall, or at least a part of a painting uh, on the wall. All right, now to set your camera to multiple exposures, uh, you have to know how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it with Canon equipment. You may be using some other manufacturer. Um, so it's a matter of going into the menu and looking for uh, the multiple exposure setting. So this is how you do it on Canon equipment. First thing up, we go to the menu button, press the menu button. When that comes up, we then will toggle over to the correct category. So there we go, over to the fourth one on a Canon camera for multiple exposure. Look for that. By default, it's disabled, so we're going to enable it. Press the set button, enable, go down to the next, which is whether we want to use average or additive. We're going to use average. Number of exposures, as many as nine on a Canon camera on this particular one, the 6D, but we're going to use two today. And there you have it. After that, you're all set to start adding textures to your photos. All right, so now that we know how to set up our camera for multiple exposure, uh, we take a look at something else. These are the flowers that we're using today. They're impatience, which is why we're doing it in the macro way because they're kind of small, these flowers, but you may have larger flowers. You may not even have to put on uh, your macro lens. And by the way, as we go through this, if you have any comments or any questions, uh, you can address those down below. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that too. So here's the close-up picture of an impatience flower and you combine it with a screen. Yes, a screen. It's because my mind works a little bit strangely sometimes. And you come up with something like this, okay? Uh, a little hard on the eye, actually, the screen, but it's, uh, again, it's just me trying to bring out something. Uh, lattice on the deck combined with the flower. And you have almost like a spotlight effect in back. Or how about this? The deck flooring, just wood. Move up a little bit closer, get the grain, combine it with the flower, and you come up with something like that. So you can do all kinds of things. It's just, there's no limit to what you can combine. You can use two exposures, which I've done today. You can use three, four, as many as you want to create all kinds of different effects. Now, in Photoshop, you have lots of options too, and you get some really vivid colors if that's what you want. So what I did with this was, this is the, the picture, or at least a, a part of the painting that I have on the wall. So there's a picture of that, and I combined it with that same flower. Now look at this. Wow, and you can see the texture just weaving through this flower. Now, how was that done? I'm gonna show you right now. This is what I started off with, the flower. The second layer is the painting, all right? Now, this is where I started to change things a little bit. I went over here to the top of the layers panel to the blend modes. This is, real, this is the most important step in the whole thing. You go to the blend modes, you're on normal right now. Let's go down and take a look. If you hit multiply, you start to see it come through. Remember too, at the opacity, we're at 100% opacity right now. You can always change that, and I'm going to later. Now multiply wasn't, I liked it, but it wasn't really what I wanted. You can try all of these. That's up to you. You can try overlay. You might like that. In this case, I used something called vivid light because I just wanted a little more punch. So there it is, vivid light. But to me, it was just a little bit over the top, not much. So I backed it off a little bit to something like the opacity. I put it down to about 75%, okay? Then I added a vignette 
And if you're not sure how to do that in Photoshop, I have another uh, tutorial on that. I think the banner's up on the screen now. And then I wanted uh, just a little bit more pop, a little bit more depth, a little bit more contrast. So I added a levels adjustment layer. And there you have it. Okay, so that's the finished product. Done in Photoshop using layers, using blend modes. In this particular case, vivid light. But the choice is entirely up to you. Another example. That is a part of a blind that is in front of my window. All right, I liked the texture in it. So I combined it again with that same flower and look what you get. And in this one, again, I used vivid light. But if you want a more sort of washed out, more ethereal, uh, more painterly almost look, you can try different blend modes and, and it can be completely, completely different. The choice, as always, is completely up to you, the photographer and the artist that's in you. And here's that screenshot again, but this time done in Photoshop. So while some people's preference may be to add textures using Photoshop, you've just seen that you can actually do it in camera using multiple exposures as well. Give it a try. It's lots of fun. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you that it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.